Okay, I'm gonna try and dive a little bit more into kind of the foundation of my beliefs, maybe more politically, but I think this applies to a lot of other stuff as well. So basically, imperfect men founded our country on a few core beliefs, right? Like all men are created equal, and that all people have fundamental rights, including liberty, freedom of speech, religion, due process of law, right to assemble, and, you know, lots of other ideas along this vein. And I think in their abstract form, all of these ideas are great and awesome and perfect, and they are amazing building blocks in which to build a society. And I think that our founding fathers did an incredible job relative to other nations, especially at the time um, in which they created the Constitution and created this nation. However, while these like core beliefs are amazing, um, they're not always so perfect in practice. For example, while it would be amazing to live in a society where we could live with absolutely no restrictions on speech, there are a few too many individuals who have used speech as a tool for invoking hate or harm on others. Just, And I think we can say pretty confidently that we as a society are better when we invoke certain restrictions on that particular form of freedom. Um, or like, you know, certain religious, religious groups um, you know, might proclaim that they have a certain belief in a certain area, but that belief is obviously harmful to, you know, individuals or groups or whatever. And we can't just let people invoke this religious exemption on freedoms all the time. Like that just, it wouldn't work because there would be some people doing some really awful things out there. And I know that these examples are a little bit extreme, but my point is that while that, while we have these, ideas as a society that, you know, we feel like we should aspire to, we cannot, like, we just can't always, like, achieve these founding principles perfectly. So with that in mind, if we have absolute freedom kind of on one end of the spectrum and we have complete captivity or no freedom on the other end of the spectrum, like, where should we fall with these various issues on this scale? And I don't think that there is an easy way to tell. And you have to get pretty philosophical to try and find an answer um, a lot of times. And the problem is, is the people who generally do have to make like these kinds of decisions are politicians. And politicians are imperfect, they're biased, and generally speaking, they are not philosophers. And like while there are modern day philosophers in our society, we really don't like listen to them that, we don't listen to them that much. And, um, you know, maybe we should, I think we probably should. And as a society, we generally let our beliefs be dictated by people who we already agree with like politically. Um, and so when we have a voice that aligns with our beliefs politically and it, you know, and declares an opinion on where we as a society should fall on this scale of, you know, freedom to no freedom, um, we tend to agree with them more just because we kind of already believe in the same things that they do. And, you know, I guess that kind of makes sense, but I think we have to do more than that. I think that if we aren't going to be listening to our modern day philosophers, we should spend a lot more time thinking about where we truly fall on this spectrum. Um, and I think another problem in this area is that we have decided that, you know, our two main political parties, the two groups of people, um, that we can align ourselves with are like on complete polar opposites of the spectrum. And I don't think that they are, you know, I think one group thinks that, you know, the other side is somewhere way further down the spectrum than they actually are. And I, 
I think that they're actually a lot closer. Um, so when a political leader suggests something, you know, that might seem a little bit more restrictive in their freedoms, one person who believes in, you know, all the freedoms in the world might see that as being like this totalitarian, awful, you know, form of captivity, where in reality, it's really not that far down that spectrum. And so when we have somebody who disagrees, the political voices who we often listen to like to exaggerate, you know, you scare politics, you scare tactics, make us think it's way further down than it actually is. So for myself, I don't think that's always true. I think, like I said, I think they're a lot closer on this, you know, on this scale of freedom and no freedom than we actually think. And, but like me personally, I probably do fall more on the, you know, government does need to play a greater role in dictating how much freedom we do and do not have simply because, you know, we've kind of proven that we don't have the ability to decide that, to govern that for ourselves, especially when it comes to larger corporations and groups. Um, so like, you know, for the individual, for the common man and stuff, I'm definitely more on the freedom side of things, but with these larger groups who are having a bigger impact on these larger complicated problems we're facing in society, whether that's, you know, uh, the climate or healthcare or racial issues or whatever, um, we need to, like I said, kind of in my opinion, I believe that we should invoke more restrictions. We should be, the government should be playing a larger role in kind of guiding these groups. And we kind of have to do that because these corporations are led by greedy, awful people, right? And um, if these groups were led by amazing people who had the best interest of society in their heart, which they don't, then we, you know, we'd give them all the freedom in the world. But that's not kind of, that's not at all what's happening. So, you know, like we could be this true, awesome, capitalistic, ultra free country. Um, but what we've seen is when we have that in its, you know, in our imperfect society, we get, we have a lot of problems that are created. We have no solutions more often than not um, to these very urgent, very serious problems we're facing. And um, so that's, that's a problem. And so for me, like I said, I find myself on this spectrum of, you know, freedom versus captivity. I find myself, I think, very much on the freedom side of things. But when it comes to this conversation of, you know, liberal, progressive, you know, versus conservative and whatever, I'm probably more on the progressive side of the issue because I think that like as a society, we are changing all the time and our politicians should be progressive enough to keep up with that change. So anyways, trying to keep this kind of succinct. And while I probably have like said very little in a lot of words, um, I appreciate you guys like just trying to, um, I guess, follow along. And I think that the concept of like restricting freedoms um, to improve society, you know, it's a tricky topic because we all want more freedoms, but we kind of have to do something in order for us to progress. And, um, I think that this concept applies to us at home, us, you know, whether it's our, you know, how we parent or whether, you know, how we run our business, how we run our church organizations, whatever, we all kind of have to figure out where we align on this spectrum of, you know, freedom versus captivity. And um, it's not always like a super easy 
like concept for us to figure out. And I think it's good for us to take a moment to try and figure out where we truly do align on this. And I, while I think it's easy to say, I believe in freedom, I don't think that there's really any of us who truly believe that we should be all the way on the very far end of the spectrum of, you know, give everybody all the freedom in the world all the time, because that obviously just doesn't work. So anyways, thank you. Um, take some time, kind of think about it, I guess. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Um, it's not an easy topic to talk about. It's super abstract and there's going to be lots of different right answers, you know, where we are right now on this spectrum, um, probably will change in five years from now, as far as like how much our government should be playing a role in our freedoms. And, you know, like I said, we should have our political thinkers kind of be aware of that at the very least and not always be holding on to this one idea of freedom. So, um, yeah, anyways, um, I'll try and share more of my thoughts in this area, but, um, that's kind of like one of the areas that has guided the foundation of my beliefs, um, maybe more with my political beliefs than anything else, but just my beliefs in general. So, yeah.